Street on the air. That is the voice of an authentic British town crier. It belongs to one of these three men. What is your name, please? Uh, my name is Herbert Waldron. My name is Herbert Waldron. My name is Herbert Waldron. Only one of these men is the real Herbert Waldron. The other two are imposters and will try to fool this panel. Tom Poston, Peggy Katz, Gene Rayburn, and Phyllis Newman. On to tell the truth with your host, Bud Collier. <laughs> Welcome once again to To Tell the Truth, brought to you this week by Anison, the headache remedy with a special combination of ingredients to relieve pain, fight depression, calm jittery nerves. Anison. Good evening, panel. Hi, Good Bob. Evening. How are you all tonight? Great. Oh, thank you. Oh, look bright and chipper, I tell you. Phyllis, it's nice to have you sitting in for Kitty Carlisle thank while she's you. on vacation. It's all wonderful here in this sea. <laughs> <laughs> We're really making you a night people, aren't we? Yes. All the way. Well, panel, would you kindly open up your envelopes and take out the first affidavit that you have not seen before and follow along with me as I read from mine. I, Herbert Waldron, am a town crier. I have been the champion town crier of Great Britain for the past three years. I won my current championship over 21 other criers on the basis of style, clearness of delivery, and of course, loudness of voice. Between contests, I keep up my crying trim by performing my services for whist drives and jumble sales. Farmers sometimes ask me to cry and keep the crows away from their crops. My nickname is Whisper, signed Herbert Whisper Waldron. <laughs> Very well, panel, these three gentlemen, as you clearly heard, all claim to be Herbert Waldron, champion town crier of Britain. We'll start this questioning tonight with Peggy Cass. Peggy? Thank you, bud. Uh, Mr. Crier number one, how many times a day do you cry? <laughs> no. no. Uh, officially, uh, uh, once. Uh, number two, whereabouts do you cry? Ooh, around the town. Uh, is, uh, number two, which town? Truro. Truro. Number three, where do you cry? I cry in Brighton. In Brighton. Thank you. What is the architecture of Brighton? Regency period. Thank you. Number one, who pays you to cry? Uh, the town council. Thank you. Uh, number two, how many authentic town criers are left in Great Britain? Mm, I would say around about 100. Thank you. Gene. Uh, number three, how do you spell uh, that call? that oh whatever you said there at the beginning, if that was you. Was... Yes, it's O-Y-E-Z. O-Y-E-Z, number one, do you spell it the same way? Yes. Number two, uh, have you ever had laryngitis? <laughs> Not while I've been crying. <laughs> <laughs> cry and the world cry. Uh, number three, uh, <laughs> can you tell me uh, what uh, a vocal zone is? It's uh, a commercial product. You know what it is? No, I don't. Number one, do you know? Phyllis, do you know? No. <laughs> uh, thank you, but uh, number one, we didn't find out where do you cry? Uh, Great Pointon. Where is that? Oh, it's in Devon, England. I see, thank you. Number three has the costume that you're wearing. Is that what you wear now? I do. Has it changed any since the original costumes of the town crier? It has. Number two, could you tell me how many other men competed with you in this contest? Mm, yes, 21. And uh, number one, is that how many town criers are left in Great Britain? Well, there's more town criers left in Great Britain than that. Thank you. Number one, could you tell me what the original town criers <laughs> cried about? I mean, what was their function? Oh. oh sorry, that's too Good bad. Question. We have to proceed Who down. Who are you asking? Tom Post. Number one. Thank you, bud. Would you answer uh, Miss Newman's question, number one, please? <laughs> Could I have that again, please? Ah. <laughs> I don't remember it myself. <laughs> yeah, what was the cry for originally? Why cry? Uh, well, uh, uh, we were the news givers. 
Thank That's you. That's before, of course, Princeton and Cetra came in. Thank you. Number three, uh, what do you do to protect your, your voice and protect your throat? Well, I do deep breathing exercises. And so must you as you mark your ballots right now because the time is gone. No more questions and, of course, no time for anything but marking ballots. So will you do so at once without change and, of course, without consultation as you vote for number one, number two, or number three. Our team of challengers will, of course, receive $250 for every incorrect vote. All ballots marked? Okay. Tom, for whom did you vote? I voted for number one, bud. I, I, I didn't get much chance to ask, but based on the, the answers that he gave, I thought it was he. We could really use him around New York, couldn't we? <laughs> He's going to cry the news. I think we could use him here. Peggy. Well, I voted for number three, only because he said he comes from Brighton, and that's a resort, and they might very well have a town cry to liven things up. Gene, <laughs> your vote. Everything uh, that number three said uh, told me to vote for him. His answers were very good. But number one has a ruddy complexion, and he looks like an outdoors man, so I had to vote for him. Phyllis? Well, the funny thing is that number two's voice sounded to me the most resonant, the one most likely. But I voted for number one because of the answers he gave me. Huh? So that makes it one, two, three for one, and one for three as we enter the arena of truth now to find out which one of these gentlemen actually is the champion town crier of Great Britain. So will the real Herbert Waldron please stand up? Oh. <laughs> well, Mr. Waldron, the uh, panel and I would like you to give us a short sample, if you will, of your oh yes. in this country <laughs> to help with the British fortnight celebration in Paramus, New Jersey. Number two, would you tell us your real name and what you really do, please, sir? My name is John Summers, and I'm a commercial artist. And number three, your real name and what do you do? My name is Roy Dexter, and I'm a mass <laughs> so smart on you, but we have one incorrect vote at $250 from Anison for you gentlemen to pass it around amongst you, and I hope it brings you joy as you brought us tonight. Thank you for being with us. Goodbye, and God bless you. Let's meet our next team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Shirley Abacare. My name is Shirley Abacare. My name is Shirley Abacare. Panel, please follow along as I read from my affidavit. You follow on yours. I, Shirley Abacare, am a folk singer. I taught myself to play a musical instrument, and when I was 20 years old, I left home for London, England. I managed to wangle an appearance on BBC, and as a result, they gave me a television series of my own. Then followed some 300 other TV appearances on four continents. A starring role in a movie, a command performance for the royal family, club dates, concerts, and an invitational tour of the Soviet Union, during which I appeared on television with Yuri Gagarin. Last year, I found time to write my first book. It is called Tales of Tumbarumba, signed Shirley Abacare. These three ladies all claim to be Shirley Abacare, folk singer, and we'll begin this cross-examination with Tom Poston. Tom? Thank you, bud. I'd like to ask, number two, what does a tumarumba mean? <laughs> tumarumba is the name of a shaman. A shaman is a witch doctor in oh. Africa. Oh, oh. Number three, what is uh, the derivation of your name? Abacare, it uh, is Ab French. 
Have a care, Abacare. <laughs> and number one, uh, what, is, what is the derivation of Abacare? My grandfather was Welsh. And you? I'm Irish. You are Irish? And that means that you left Ireland to go to England in the first place? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Number two, uh, do you know Charlie Close? A folk singer named Charlie Close? Charles mm. Close? No, I do not. Would you tell us, number two, what is... Thank Peggy. You. Thank you. Uh, number three, who is Joan Baez? She's a folk singer. Thank you. Uh, number two, who is John Freeman? John Freeman, I do not know. Uh, thank you. Uh, number, uh, uh, number two, uh, South Africans put on a show in London. Uh, do you know the name of that musical? King Kong. Thank you. Uh, number one, who is Miriam Makima? Oh, she's a folk singer. Number three, where does she come from? South Africa. Thank you. Uh, number two, who is Odetta? Odetta is an American folk singer. Thank you very much. Uh, number two, where did, where did you leave to go to London? Uh, Nigeria. Nigeria. Thank you. Jane, number one, did you get to know Yuri Gagarin at all? Did you have a chance to talk to him? And what was your impression of him? Well, he's very handsome. He doesn't speak English, and I don't speak Russian. <laughs> you didn't get to know him very well. Then. No. Uh, number one, uh, what is your definition of the word tumba rumba? Tumbara is an Irish name. I see. Gaelic. Number three, uh, do you have any idea what kind of folk songs Harry Belafonte specializes in? Calypso. Calypso songs. Uh, number two, uh, what, what was the month and the year that you met Yuri Gagarin? I, I don't quite remember, but I, it was in the uh, early... Uh, early what? Fall. Phyllis. Thank you, bud. Uh, number three, what's the rival station to BBC in London? ITV. Number two, do you agree with that? Yes. What is the name of the network that, that I'm thinking of in London, number two? Do you know? Rediffusion? No, number one, uh, do you know where Granada is, li is located in London, Granada television station? Um, Shepherd's Bush. Number two, do you know where Granada is located? Yes, Shepherd's Bush, yes. Yes, number three, do you agree with that? Um, I think it's in the uh, Midlands. Thank you. Number two, what is the instrument that you play? I play a guitar. Could you tell me on sheet music where guitar notations are? That's all the time oh, we have. Oh, I would have gotten sorry. with this one. <laughs> <laughs> well, she was safe on the bell, maybe. But in any oh. event, there we have it. It's time only to vote now. So please mark your ballots at once and without change. And, of course, no consultation is allowed. Oh. As you vote for number one, number two, or number three. So mark them up with what information you have. All ballots marked? No, no, no. no, no. no. <laughs> Wait till next week. Well, I can't stand it. I was sure until just one second ago. Me too. They well, made a oh. sure. Well, mark it now. No, Take a I chance. Mean, I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> there. All right, Tom, for whom did you vote? I wish I could have written a one so that it would look more like a two, because I really didn't know what... Uh, I don't know. Uh, the, I had to ask what Tumba Rumba meant, and she told me, and then the, uh, the other one said something else. I'm really confused. I wish I knew more Gaelic. I voted for number one. Peggy. Well, I was sure it was number two, until number three said that Granada Television was in the Midlands. It's in Manchester, as far as I know. Oh, oh it's it is. So who'd you vote for? Jane. Oh, mm. <laughs> I voted for number two because, she, purely from a deduction in the thing there, where it said she went to London, and it didn't appear seemed plausible to me that one or three could have gone to London. I don't know what I'm what? talking about. <laughs> Phyllis? I'm very upset. <laughs> because I, I voted for number two, but I think it might be number three. I can't believe that Tumba Rumba's an Irish name. I don't care what anybody says. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> there you have it. So let's go for the truth, shall we? Without any further delay, as we learn which one of these charming ladies actually is the folk singer. So, will the real Shirley Abacare please stand up? <laughs> oh, very nice food. Shirley, I wonder if you would honor us with a little bit of song, would you? Thank you, I'd love to. Okay, fine. Oh, one.
once a jolly swagman camped beside a billabong under the shade of a coolabar tree. And he sang as he watched and waited till his billy boiled. You'll come a waltzing Matilda with me. Waltzing Matilda, waltzing Matilda. You'll come a waltzing Matilda with me. And he sang as he watched and waited till his billy boiled. You'll come a waltzing Matilda with me. Tom asked, and many of you else might want to know what Shirley was playing was a zither, right, Shirley? That's right. Number one, what is your real name and what do you really do? My name is Vera O'Riordan. I'm a stewardess with Irish International Airlines. <laughs> <laughs> and Tumba Rumba to you. <laughs> Number two, what is your real name and what do you really do? My name is Cicely Tyson, and I'm a student at the New School for Social Research. And I was born right here in New York City. <laughs> Good job of pulling all the way. Three incorrect votes at $250 each. That's $750, ladies. That'll keep those smiles on your faces. That's from Anderson, of course, and a gift package of the fine products from the makers of Anderson. And our sincere thanks for being with us. Good night, and God bless you. <laughs> now let's meet our third team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Gary McHugh. My name is Gary McHugh. My name is Gary McHugh. Will you follow along with your copies of this affidavit panel, please? I, Gary McHugh, am coordinator for the Western Satellite Research Network. This network is made up of teams of volunteer observers who track not only the 60 satellite payloads now orbiting the Earth, but also the several hundred pieces of assorted debris floating about in space. This debris consists of burned out boosters, second stages of rockets, assorted metal fragments, and other types of space junk. Our amateur observers use everything from binoculars to expensive astronomical equipment. The information the teams gather is relayed by me to the North American Air Defense Command. Since our operation has been in existence, we have been responsible for the relocation of six lost satellites. Signed, Gary McHugh. <laughs> this time we have three gentlemen all claiming to be the same person. Gary McHugh by name, satellite tracker. And we'll start this with the host of the new daytime television hits, The Match Game, Gene Rayburn. Gene? Thank you, bud. Uh, number two, uh, good evening, gentlemen. Could you give me an example of an oblate spheroid? The Earth. What's that? The Earth. Thank you. Uh, number three, would you define the word nadir, N-A-D-I-R? Yes, the lowest point. Uh, number one, how many items are there floating around now in space that have been put up there by man? Do you have an idea? Well, nobody knows, but there are between four and five hundred, possibly. Number one, do you happen to know what the uh, term Coriolis force means? Coriolis force yes. is a magnetic phenomenon. Number two, do you agree with that? Coriolis force is a, an acceleration. Thank you. Phyllis. Thank you. Uh, number two, could you tell me where you got your training and what degree you hold? I hold a degree in thermodynamics. And what is that, a, a bachelor or a doctor or something? A bachelor's degree in thermodynamics. From where? UCLA. Thank you. Number three, could you tell me who won the Nobel Prize in Science last year? No, I can't. You can't? Number one, could you? No. Nope. Or number two? No. I see. Number three, could you please explain to me what satellite payloads are? Yes, it's that portion of the entire satellite which may go into orbit in which we are interested. That portion of it which is capable of relaying information back to us. Thank you. Number... Tom. 
Thank you, Bud. Gee, that is fascinating. I'm finding out more about the panel than I am about these guys. <laughs> Number two, what's the opposite of nadir? Zenith. Any other word, number three? No, those two will do fine. Thank you. Number one, I'm not it's sure an amateur I organization. I beg your pardon, number three. I'm not quite sure I understand that question. That's all right. I don't <laughs> mean, do I agree no. with him? <laughs> number one, uh, well, is this an amateur organization? Uh, almost completely, yes. Uh, number two, does that mean that you are not a civil organization? You are not uh, commissioned by a government or... Uh, State no, local. this organization is not commi commissioned by the government or sponsored by the government. Thank you. Peggy. Thank you. Number it's two. even better, right? It sounds as though it's a real mess up there with everything just broken up flying around. <laughs> I mean, what if they bump into one another? I mean, would that, would that cause an explosion up there? Well, it hasn't happened yet. I see. As well, far as I know. Number three, are all those things up there ours, or have the Russians put some mess up there, too? Oh, no. <laughs> some of it is theirs also. Oh, I see. Uh, uh, number three, do any of those things ever fall down and re-enter the Earth? Oh, yes. They all do eventually, or nearly all. My, they do. And uh, number one, do they ever hit anybody? That's all the time we have, I'm sorry to say. So whether they hit anybody, you just have to watch out. But right now, please mark your ballot at once without change and no consultation permitted whatsoever as you vote for number one, number two, or number three. All set, everybody? All right, Tom, for whom this time? I voted for number two. I just figured it had to be him, bud. All right. Peggy. Well, I voted for number two. He looks like the type that would volunteer to do something like that. A great organization. Yes, marvelous. I don't understand what good it does just to know that they're up there. <laughs> Somebody's got to count, Peggy. Oh, I see. <laughs> Gene, your vote, please. I voted for number two, Bud, because uh, he appears to have uh, superior knowledge uh, to my own knowledge of the subject, and he's right. <laughs> <laughs> Phyllis. I think we're all going to be skunked. <laughs> I voted for number two because he was dark, handsome, and brooding. <laughs> Watch it. Watch it. <laughs> so there we go once more as we zero in on our own particular moment of truth as we find out which one of these gentlemen is the real satellite tracker. So, will the real Gary McHugh please stand up? Smart panel, you're yeah. all space kids, right from the word go. <laughs> Incidentally, just to set the record straight, Gary McHugh is a research engineer for the Space and Information Systems Division of North American Aviation. That's for the record. And this is just in his spare time, all volunteer. I believe so, is that right? Yeah, just like you're volunteering for this. Well, I think we're proud. <laughs> ah, did you hear that? Very worthwhile. Just I like you're say. volunteering for this, said he. <laughs> <laughs> Number one, what is your real name, sir? What do you really do? My name is Charles Leadham, and I'm a freelance writer. <laughs> Number three, may we have your real name, and what you do? My name is Rufus Robinson, I'm an, and I'm a dentist. <laughs> He fills space, in other words. <laughs> well, the score doesn't show too much in your favor, gentlemen. I'm sorry to say our panel was a little bit too smart on that round. There were four correct instead of any incorrect. And in that case, from Anderson, $150 at least for you to divide up amongst you. And we thank you for playing our game with us. And on the way out, you pick up a package of the fine products from the makers of Anderson. Thanks for being with us. Goodbye and God bless you. All the time we have for fun. Good night to you, panel. Good night, bud. Good night, bud. Bless you for being your own sweet selves, and good night to all of you. May I remind you once again to join us again next week at the same time, and I'll see you tomorrow afternoon on our daytime show. In the meantime, may I say good night for Anison and remind you once again to tell the truth. Bye. <laughs> to tell the truth is a Mark Goodson, Bill Hartman production.
the truth has been brought to you by Dristan Nasal Mist, the decongestant nasal spray for relief in seconds from sinus congestion and head cold distress. Dristan Nasal Mist. Johnny Olson speaking for To Tell the Truth, this program was pre-recorded.